Hello everyone, uh, we are back, and uh, this may be the first one you're, you're watching, but back again uh, for us commentators, and I'm joined by Joe Brown, and we have the finals of the LDL DMAX format, so very, very excited to, to bring that here to you today. Joe, how's it going? Uh, it's it's going well. I'm excited. I know um, you're excited as you as you lazy ghost. You are in one of the three finals matches we had in the Lowly Draft League this season. So no spoilers on it. But for anyone who hasn't watched the majors division finals, you should definitely check it out because because lazy ghost and his opponent put on a show. Um, and I think I'm excited for for this matchup here too between our our players in one of our in one of our lower divisions. But this still seems like it's a really fun matchup. Yep, and I misspoke. It is the the Z move division, so apologies for that. But we've got uh, K Steamsma here uh, and joined by uh, I'm Jewish, who we will refer to as uh, BGC uh, throughout the course of the game. So we are going to let them know that we are ready and we will jump into things. Yeah, so uh, K K S T M S or K S T I M S. Well, I'll say K S T T M S. I could be wrong on it, um, but he's the coach of the Bay State Buizel, and then B G C is the coach of the New York Urshifu. So already, uh, he's probably like one of the first players with the Urshifu team name in a in a draft league. He's jumping on quick. Yeah, really cutting edge here, and uh, <laughs> we're we're trying to bring these to you, casting uh, and recording these, so. Uh, we're we're going to try to figure out some information on the fly because these guys have started a little bit sooner than we had anticipated, so bear with us. Uh, but we're going to try to bring you some great commentary. Uh, Joe on the play-by-play -play and uh, myself providing a little bit of color today. But I'm excited. It uh, looks like so we got some interesting teams out there as well. Yeah, I uh, I have to I have to go back and look and see what BGC's options are for for Dynamaxing. But for those who are unfamiliar with how we've run things in the LDL this season, uh, each team has drafted a Gigantamax captain, and then they have two other Pokemon that are able to Dynamax. So, for example, um, I know Jirachi is one of KSTM's Dynamax Bradyary. captains. Jir Jirachi and Braviary. And since he has not brought his G Gigantamax captain, the yep. Jirachi is allowed to Dynamax. Yep. Now, on the other end, Gyarados I'm not familiar. Gyarados and Mimikyu, but is Toxtricity his G-Max? Yeah, or... It seems like it, and again, bear with us, we'll try to figure that out through the game. Right, but, so uh, if yeah. Toxtricity is his G-Max user, he cannot Dynamax the Gyarados. But we'll find out, because we don't have that information in front of us. So, oh, that was a nice uh, a nice uh, burn, though, from Incineroar. Yeah, nice trade there. Uh, Kabalion may be a special, ooh, which we see there where the burn doesn't matter too much. And that's a special Incineroar, too, with the Flamethrower bringing Kabalion down to 24% of its HP, so... Uh, I think this this Kabalion did its job getting up rocks, though. It seems like that was really its main priority because now uh, if there's, say, a Focus Sash on the Rabambi or something like that, it would be able to break that Sash. Um, and I I believe the only thing on KSTM's side that can run Defog is the Rotom. Uh, so unless he has that here, these rocks are here to stay. The fo Focus Blast is unfortunate, but... Uh, at least rocks are up and Cabalion's done its job. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this too. Uh, I believe K Steams may be female, and if that is the case, and we call oh, you dude I apologize. or guy, we yeah. apologize. <laughs> we'll try our best to get that right again. Trying our best there. Oh, the focus blast doing big damage. At least one of them connected. That would have been really <laughs> hurtful if, if both missed. Yeah, and I think uh, really uh, we it says seventy percent accuracy. I think we could all live with fifty fifties on focus blast. <laughs> uh, so uh, a really good start here. And what's interesting to me is that we saw rocks on the Cobalion. So I'm wondering if this Ferrothorn may be a little bit more offensive uh, or an attacking variant, or maybe it's just carrying spikes to hazard stack. Uh, regardless, I believe uh, BGC got the rocks up, probably the best that you could ask for Cobalion. And now uh, it's time to force some pressure. Yeah, I, 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 I want to find out what that Ferrothorn is up to because it would make sense if you brought Stealth Rocks on the Cobalion to then run another type of hazard on your your ferrothorn but for now we're going to see the toxicity uh sometimes toxicities do like to uh go for say a uh a, a sound based move to boost its 
its special attack, which is exactly uh, what we saw there. But he was not holding the throat spray item. Uh, okay, that's what you. I was actually expecting on that turn was the throat spray boost, but uh, it's not what BGC went for. Yeah, based on that damage, thirty percent to an Evole uh, Rhydon, that could be choice specs, uh, and uh, that that may be interesting too because it, if it is the G Max format, it's not going to be able to. It's not going to have to lock into a move. Ooh, Power Whip, not enough to knock out this Incinero, though, thanks to the Intimidate. And now Ferrothorn is instantly pressured by uh, it's what we saw Flamethrower Incinero earlier. So it's not even like uh, with Flare Blitz, it would be knocking itself out in recoil. Uh, yeah. So this seems like a pretty safe Flamethrower, and it's really on BGC to decide who he wants this to switch in. Yeah, Quag is a pretty relatively safe uh, switch in, not risking a burn on Gyarados. Uh, Heavy Duty Boots, the item of choice on the Incinero, as it did not take damage. Will was into Toxtricity, Toxtricity being a special attacker, not really concerned about that. And we're in the same spot we were a couple turns ago uh, with the Incineroar in against Toxtricity. That will be his uh, his first knockout on his side. So it's now 5-5 five to five for both of these uh, players. But if he is choice locked into Sludge Bomb, that would be resisted into this Rhydon again. Mm -hmm. Incineroar going down there is big. That means that uh, Case Themes has only got the Passimian as a way to manage that Ferrothorn, even though it is is burned uh, it is going to be a pain to take down uh, paired up with the quagsire a nice little defensive synergy core i'm all about my defensive cores it's going to be interesting to see how uh, case teams really gets rid of that quagsire yeah and that quagsire will switch in here take rocks but recover it all back up thanks to the leftovers and passimian switches in on uh case teams side there so uh, a pretty strong close combat potentially uh the passimian also gets u-turn so there's really good pivot potential uh but this quagsire is going to bait out an attack here just to see what it could potentially lock itself into uh as the choice scarf is a very common uh, item on Passimian. Scald will bring it down uh, around into the 66. No burn, though. In yeah. that, and that didn't do a lot, even at minus one. Yeah, they're going really fast, so we'll try our best to keep up. Based on the <laughs> damage there and a minus uh, two Spadef, that looks like an AV variant. And this Quagsire, who has who stayed in, you know, protected twice on, on these turns or these close combats, you can kind of maybe potentially expect Passimian to stay in in close combat again. So something like Gyarados would both intimidate it and resist the fighting attack. Something like Toxtricity also would resist the, the close combat. But, of course, it's starting to get a little bit low thanks to the burn from those couple of turns. So uh, BGC might want to make a, a defensive or a switch here that will put him in a better spot. Like, say, if Gyarados is running Dragon Dance, uh, he could switch in here. He'd have to take rocks, unfortunately. But yeah. once you get that speed boost, it would be faster than the uh, the Jirachi potentially if there's no choice guard. Ooh. Whoa! And that's a that's a knockout. Quagsire going down. Not really doing anything this matchup. Yeah, and uh, no heavy duty boots, so Gyarados going to take twenty five percent here as well. Oh. Bring it down to twenty four percent HP. This oh my uh, god, they're going so the fast. <laughs> <laughs> so Max Airstream will take down the um, the <laughs> the uh, oh my gosh I'm blanking uh, Passimian on his side and now because it's Moxie Gyarados not Intimidate that's plus two attack plus two speed and this Gyarados does not care that it's only at 19% health remaining because it's so fast it's going to be faster than anything on on the opponent's side there even Rabombi. Uh, it would be faster than that. Obviously, at this point, it would be faster than Choice Scarf Jirachi. So if he had a, a tech electric attack on the Jirachi for the Gyarados, that wouldn't even be an option at this point. So yeah, not something. To mention, yeah, not to mention if Jirachi is Fire Punch as a way of dealing with Ferrothorn, if Gyarados is able to set up the rain from a Hydro Vortex, that makes uh, getting rid of this Ferrothorn even more difficult. Right. Um, and based on the Life Orb, based on the the recoil that's going to take with each move, uh, Gyarados will be able to get all three attacks off from a dynam or from a Dynamax, and so uh, Case Themes was going to really have to be careful about what she decides to sack here. It's such it's such a tough spot when you have Dynamaxing, um, because you have to you have to obviously use your three turns of it effectively. But sometimes it's more important to negate their Dynamax. And at this point, uh, KSTM is just trying to prolong long enough uh, through these three turns from the Gyarados and see if she's still in a comfortable enough position uh, to come out afterwards and use her Dynamax on her Jirachi. 
Yeah, not a fan of that max darkness there. There is no water resist on uh, the opponent's side from Gyarados, so setting up the rain is going to make sure that it absolutely demoralizes anything that wants to switch in. I also don't agree with the Rotom coming in and just taking uh, that chip damage there, potentially scouting, but anything was going to go down. And maybe we don't and even have a water darkness. move on this Gyarados, which is crazy. That would be that would be pretty crazy. I know in VGC, Gyarados has become a very solid grass type, but uh, in in singles, you would expect the you expect the water attack on on the beast of a Gyarados here. But uh, that's that's oh, even through resisted wow. earthquake, it knocks itself out. So Gyarados, move. yeah, Gyarados going out like a champ, saying you can't even knock me out. I'll do my I'll do the job myself. And now it's Jirachi versus the world. Yeah, Jirachi versus the world. Uh, the only way I see this going well is if it is, um, <laughs> it's got psychic and fire coverage. That's about the only way it's going to be able to hang in there. Even then, Noivern probably packing up. Oh, nice board. switch. Nice switch, baiting the psychic into the toxicity, and that's exactly what happens with this max mind, mind storm. And the steel spike, he thought yeah, he was going to switch. Move. Switch again, but he did not. Knocking off the Akaberry, not relevant at this point. But this Ferrothorn will be knocked out uh, if he goes for a Max Mindstorm again here because Psychic Terrain is up. Uh, the last one did 23%, and that was out of terrain. Uh, but he doesn't go for it. He goes for Max Steel Spike instead. Get, or uh, She goes for Max Steel Spike, going, getting that. Not too sure how that worked. It worked out since Ferrothorn knocked itself out due to Life Orb, which is not the most common move in the world. Uh, or common item on on the Ferrothorn, but that was a really risky uh, turn <laughs> with the second Max Steel Spike. I don't know if that was necessary. Yeah, I, and you would have liked to have seen some kind of fire move there. Uh, it just does so well with the the, the coverage that Fire Steel gives you. Uh, both coaches talking it over right now about the intensity of those uh, those G Maxes. So, oh, and in BGC even saying I think you win. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Noivern does not have a move does, to deal yeah, with this. Does Noivern have coverage? If it only has like Hurricane and U turn, he might uh, he might be in, in some trouble here because uh, the Hurricane would be resisted and obviously U turn's not doing a lot. He's saying that Noivern isn't that strong, but this could all be an elaborate It could ploy. be a bait. It could be a bait. A final right? bait. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I think right here, um, ooh, the stored power. So maybe oh. that's why they were going for those steel spikes instead. That makes sense. All right, it all comes down to this Noivern and Jirachi. What does Noivern have? Does it have a fire move to hit this Jirachi? It's at 63%. You can't – This it all comes down to Noivern versus Jirachi. The winner of this turn is going to win our, our Z-move division here. This is, this is way too intense. Yeah, and stored power is going to be a – off to knock out this Noivern barring a uh, just a spit F set. So really, what it comes down to, if you got if you got Hurricane wave, can confuse. Yeah, Hurricane can confuse. Heat Wave needs a crit to knock this thing out. I, again, we don't know the sets, but I would think uh, Hurricane confusion or Heat Wave crit with a burn potentially <laughs> just for the extra <laughs> luck. Oh, uh, this is really scary. This is also the last turn of Psychic Terrain, so it'll be the last turn that Jirachi gets the boost from the uh, onto its Psychic attacks. But it probably is all. It, it probably would be strong enough without Psychic Terrain, as Noivern is a relatively frail uh, Pokemon, having really most of its its stats uh, parked into its speed. Uh, so I don't think the Psychic Terrain will be too important. But this is this is a pivotal turn here. Uh, but you do wonder, like, does BGC, does he have the fire move or does he not? You know, that's that's what it comes down to. Yeah, and they're talking it out here. Flamethrower! So flame not enough. It does get the burn and a <gasps> wish. Well, Whoa! The wish, I think that uh, that was a really, a really difficult play. Um, because now that you wish, unless you have protect to go along with it, uh, this a second flamethrower would knock you out. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I think you got to have Protect here uh, to be able to go for a play like that. We saw Steel Spike, um, as uh, and we saw Psychic. So, oh, no, it, they're, they're Calm Mind. I don't understand that. Even if Wait, they're Calm, calm mind, mind, you got to go for Stored Power there. Oh wow that that was a that was a really bad uh, <laughs> that was a really bad turn of events there for K Steams oh, not calm. going for the not going for the the, the stored power. Oh, they're saying that they had the Akaberry still in the calc, so that's why they thought they were free for to wish on that turn. 
Yeah, I think even then you got to go for the kill. Uh, cause right, really because he, even if you have the Akka, then the second flamethrower still knocks out. Yep. And, man, they're talking it out now, but we'll see what actually happens here. I would have imagined just no protect. Uh, this isn't an elaborate bait, and uh, Flamethrower is going to pick it up for BGC. That's that's huge. That's great. That's great move coverage uh, on on his side, knowing, you know, he didn't even need the water move on Gyarados, but he needed the fire move yeah, on the Noivern. And Noivern knocks out Jirachi, and BGC and the New York Urshifu are our Lonely Draft League Z-Move Division champion here this season. And that was a really fun, really fast-paced matchup. Yeah, that was really great. What we're going to try to do now is see if BGC is willing to do an interview. Uh, so bear with us. We are going to try to work that out now. Uh, Joe, if you want to try to stall with any kind of great yeah, comments I on can, this matchup. Yeah, I can, I can definitely do that. I think, uh, I think it really comes down to the fact that BGC used their Dynamax much more effectively than um, than KT, KSTM Society. Again, sorry if I said it wrong the whole time. I'm not really familiar with how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, but those three turns of Dynamax from the Gyarados were pivotal. Uh, we we actually talked about, at the moment, the Passimian being choice-locked into close combat was really good for Gyarados, either as a switch-in, so it could Dragon Dance in its face, or as what actually worked out really well for BGC, was sacking the Quagsire um, so that he got the free switch into Gyarados, so it only took 25% damage from stealth rocks instead of uh instead of taking the stealth rocks and a close combat on the switch in there so that was a a really good use of of the sack on the quagsire to get get gyarados in i think it got up uh i think it got up to plus four attack uh because it got so with dragon dance which was one and then it got three knockouts on its three turns of of dynamax and uh, it might have got it might have got another knockout. I can't really remember if it got three or four knockouts in that in that matchup. But the Gyarados was absolutely the the MVP. And uh, you know what started as a as a, a bad turn one with the with the focus blast missed on on the Cavalian ended up uh, it still worked out fine for them and their champion. Yeah, and and in a great game again, uh, winning a championship in any division, no matter what the. Uh, you know what the restrictions are what the format is is a is a great testament to a coach's ability to not only draft a team but uh come up with some creative sets week in and week out so it doesn't look like we're going to be doing a post-game interview but want to thank both coaches for uh for making it to the finals allowing us to record them and having a heck of a battle yeah that was that was pretty fun uh, i'm i'm happy we we recorded all three matches here all three finals so uh, they're all all should be uploaded to our YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe for for next season's matches. They're going to be just as exciting. Yep. And uh, for, for Joe Brown, I am uh, the lazy ghost uh, Marty here signing off and we hope to see you soon.